Hi, I'm Bishop Daniel Magenberg, and I'd like to reflect with you on the gospel reading that you will hear when you come to Mass this Sunday, and we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our passage will come from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14. In this particular scene, we read of the disciples being sent um, across the Sea of Galilee and encountering a great storm in the middle of the night. Now, it's really significant that the disciples are described as being harassed and tormented by the waves um, because those are actions that aren't really um, done by forces of nature. Those are actions that are done by human beings uh, with, with ill intent to harass or to torment someone. It's really t describing for us much of the situation of the early church. Um, and there's other images in this particular passage that would indicate that this really is, is meant to help us understand uh, the early church experience, especially during the times of persecution or even um, uh, the resistance that uh, early Christians felt to the proclamation of the gospel. Now, the disciples are in the middle of this storm for a very specific reason. And that is that Jesus made them get in the boat and go across the sea. And as they're in the middle of this very dangerous situation and experiencing all these contrary forces, they must have asked themselves the question, whose bright idea was this? And of course, that's when they begin to blame Jesus because he's the one that made them get into the boat and go across the sea in the middle of the night. And now they're in the middle of a storm. You see, the disciples, in a real sense, wondered if, if being in the midst of that storm is something that God wanted. Um, why in this world would they be facing all of these terrible challenges if they are doing the will of God? And what that reveals to us is one of the important clarifications of faith that each one of us needs to ask ourselves. Because we all go through stormy moments. And sometimes we go through stormy moments of life, not because we're, um, um, what do you want to call it, unfaithful to God's will, but specifically because we are doing God's will. And the storms are a sign of all the forces that are trying to oppose God's will from taking place. And so oftentimes those storms that we face, are we are facing because of our obedience to God because we are on mission as Jesus sent us. And so we need to have that quality of perseverance and of trust and of clarity of vision that allows us to continue and stay on mission even when we face storms and to not doubt that um, somehow the storms are a sign that God has abandoned us or that God is punishing us. That's not it at all but rather it, it can be a sign of our fidelity and of our actual um, correct mission. Now it's in the middle of those storms though, in the middle of that whole experience, that Jesus comes to the disciples on the water. And as he does that, um, you know, the disciples are all afraid because it's the fourth watch of the night. Now that's an important detail because the fourth watch of the night was the darkest time of the, of the night. And so it's in the darkest moment when the disciples actually realize the presence of Jesus with them. When they would think that Jesus would be most absent from their lives is the moment that he reveals his presence with them in the midst of the storm. Now for Peter, Peter raises a very interesting question. Peter says to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Now, Notice the doubt in Peter's um, statement. He says, if it is you, because Jesus had just said, I am to the disciples. You know, when, when they questioned his presence, he said, I am. And that's the divine name of God. Jesus was actually saying, God is with you at the darkest hour of the night, in the midst of the most threatening storms that you've ever faced, God is with you. And Peter says, really, really? If it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. 
We need to understand this. Who has the power to walk on water? Really, God. God alone has the power to walk on water. And that's what Peter is asking for. Peter is saying, I don't like this frail human reality of being afraid in this boat. Give me the power to walk on water. Give me the power to be like God. That's what Peter is asking for. If it's really you, give me the power to not face these torments anymore. Take me out of these moments of distress. Um, that's what I want. That's what Peter is asking for. And he's asking for it with the voice of doubt. So Jesus says to Peter, come. Uh, we see that, or we hear that sometimes as an invitation. What we probably need to hear it more as is, is Jesus saying, all right, Peter, if you think, if you think that you can be like God, why don't you just give that a try? And so let's see how this goes for you. <laughs> and of course, Peter does get out of the boat. And we're told that he begins to come near Jesus, but then he becomes distracted. And Peter, you know, begins to falter. And he begins to sink into the water in that moment. Now, Jesus allowed Peter to come to that moment for a reason. Jesus knew that Peter didn't have the power to walk on water. You know, Peter didn't know it. Peter wanted to be like God. And Jesus wanted Peter, more than anything else, to be a disciple who trusted in him. And so Peter begins to sink. And at that moment, Peter calls out and says, Lord, save me. Now that's the prayer that Peter should have offered all along. That's the prayer by which Peter acknowledges his need for a savior and Jesus's power to be a savior. Rather than wanting to walk on water and wanting to be like God, Peter should have prayed for the humble faith to be an obedient, dependent disciple of Jesus. And now Peter finally is. Peter knows that he can't do it on his own, that he's not like God. And he needs a savior in his life. And that's when he says, Lord, save me. And Jesus can save him in that moment. And he does. Jesus then returns Peter to the boat and comments on the little faith of the disciples. Now that comment may sound a little bit um, insulting. I think it's meant to be comforting actually. Because although the disciples' faith may be small, Jesus is still willing to work with them. He's still willing to get in the boat with them and to continue with them on mission. You know what? <clears throat> All of us face moments when we feel like our faith is small. Maybe we doubt God. Maybe we question the storms. Maybe we want to turn around and go back because we face a difficult moment in life. Jesus is still willing to work with us even when our faith is small in those moments, just as he was willing to work with them. And in response, we see that the disciples pay him homage. The disciples worship him because they realize that this is not a human action. This is a sign of God's presence with them. You see, before that, the disciples presumed that God's presence meant that they would have no headaches, that they would face no difficulties, that there would be no storms. But now Jesus has revealed to them, he is with them in the midst of their storms. And their challenge is not um, to wait for smooth sailing. Their challenge is to be faithful, be perseverant, be trusting, and to call out for a savior when we need a savior. So in the example of Jesus accompanying the disciples in this moment, maybe we can see some moments in our own lives where we need to have that deeper trust, uh, where we need to remember our need for a savior and rather than praying to be like God, who is able to triumph over the forces of nature, let's pray instead to be more um, like, uh, like Peter, who was able to call out for the Lord when he needed it. And we'll have that trust. Let's pray. God, our Father, we thank you for entrusting to us the invitation to discipleship and for sending us on mission. We pray that we will never doubt um, the mission that you have placed us on, 
but that we will persevere no matter what storms come our way and that we will do so oftentimes because those storms are a sign of your presence, not your absence. We ask this in Christ's name, amen. May the blessing of Almighty God be with you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.